Okay, guys, so um, this is uh, how to light for a live screen or video in five minutes. So the first thing I'd like to, uh, uh, the first rule I'd like to present is lighting your subject rather than mm. the space or the camera or any of the other elements around you. So you want indirect light. So the light source shouldn't be seen by the camera if possible, because that will affect the quality of the footage that you get out of it. Particularly if your camera is on automatic or something like that, it will try to compensate and any light sources it can see will generally darken the image, make you harder to see. So I've got this, uh, this little uh, thing here, bring this guy in here. So this is uh, standard three-point lighting, and this is something we all know in film and video, and this is the way we set up for most interviews and that type of thing. So the, th the thing you want to know first is, number one, the key light. That's the most important light. I've got a key light right here. It's casting onto my face. I'll just bring myself back into the view here, like this, and you can see that it's casting onto the majority of my face. This is my main source of illumination, and it's just off to the one side. So I bring this diagram back in again. Oh, that's not how we do that. Do this, and so now I've broken the screen yard. It's like that. No. <laughs> I've broken it. There we go. There we go. I don't even have to use the system that I <laughs> to get one to use. Uh, so the second light you might want is a fill light. And the fill light is used to fill the other side. So this fills out what the main key light is unable to reach. And that you can only have just to the left. So my key's to the right, and then my fill is to the left. And then finally, if you want to get really fancy, you can then bring in a backlight. So, like this. And the backlight gives you the kind of edge that helps separate you from your background. And so those are the three fundamental lights that we, we tend to use when lighting for an interview, lighting for video, lighting for a stream. As people at home, you probably don't need to worry about the, the backlight. This is, this is a nice to have, and it, but it's just an extra. The main two lights you're really interested in are the key and the fill. The fill is secondary. If you can only get one, just get a key and, and use that. Otherwise, use a fill, and then you'll have perfect balance lighting on both sides. Now, the final thing to know is that it's best where you can to lock down the camera. Often, when you get a webcam, something like that, it will try to do everything on automatic settings. Normally, if you've got an application that comes with it, drivers, etc., you can find the settings within that, and you can lock down the uh, exposure and those type of things, frame rate, etc. You can set all the resolution and all the settings there. And it's much better to lock everything down, control the environment, light that environment that then you know is locked down and isn't going to change. And that way you can be sure that then everything you set up and everything that you present is all going to be the same and you're not going to get any fluctuations during the actual footage. Um, and then finally, um, diffusion and using other lights. So you don't have to have a fancy light. These lights here, I'll just show you, are... Turn it off so I don't blind the camera. These are small little kind of rectangular shapes. They're no bigger than a credit card. These cost about $50 each. They have lithium battery inside. You can power them off of a USB. They come with these uh, little, little uh, diffusion plates that go on them so you can make it nice and bright if you want to. And then you can put the uh, diffusion plate on the front, which softens it. And these are fantastic. You can scatter them around as you need them. They, as I say, they're battery powered. You can throw them in a bag, take them with you. Fantastic for just lighting just about anything and really inexpensive these days. If you don't want to go out and buy something, you can use angle poise lamp, uh, desk lamp, LED lamp, anything like that. Um, if you want to knock down the brightness a little bit, use a bit of uh, tracing paper or some kitchen uh, grease proof paper, something like that, just to knock that uh, harshness down of the actual light itself. And um, just a couple of things not to do. Um, and this bit goes out to Brett. Don't, don't fire floodlights into your camera. That doesn't work. That's not very helpful. Also, don't turn all the lights off. That also doesn't help. That's really, how are you supposed to see anything? So what you really want is the balance in between. And the, the best light you can, try not to light the space too much. If you can, keep your background nice and dark. That helps separate you. And just go for an overall nice, balanced, controlled amount of light. And control is the key there. You can use an outdoor light source, something incandescent, but 
if the light changes because clouds, because of the weather, that type of thing, you'll get fluctuations in your end result. And it may get dingy, it may get overbright, etc. So that's three-point lighting in five minutes.